Hello, this is Julia Whittup with Talk Story TV, and I am have with me today Lucinda Bakken-White, who is going to talk to us about, well, I'd like you to tell us how you were inspired to become a shamanic practitioner. Greetings, Julia. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me. Well, I had always recognized from a young age a disconnect between who I was on the inside and what I was presenting and projecting and doing on the outside. So for some reason, I made it a lifelong mission to get at the root of what was going on. This feeling of uh, putting on the perfect front and doing everything society, culture, family told me to do, and yet recognizing on the inside, my thoughts and the feelings in my body didn't match. So it was a spiritual quest, a lifelong journey of peeling back the layers to what I now call getting at the bone, because the bones symbolically represent um, our innermost authentic self, that part of us that never dies, because at the end of this lifetime, our flesh will decompose, but the bones will remain. Mm -hmm. And ironically, halfway into my journey, because I've been doing this since a young girl, and now I'm 59, uh, I started collecting animal bones and it was my connection to the spiritual realm. I didn't know it at first. I just did it. It wasn't until looking retro 20 years into this that I realized that collecting the animal bones was like reclaiming the lost parts of my soul. And now I teach that. Wow. That's very fascinating. And do you make art pieces out of them or? Oh, I do. I do. Uh, I first started collecting bones. Well, it actually started when I was at a, um, on private property where there was um, buffalo bones that were ancient. It was uh, uh, at the bottom of a cliff where the Native Americans used to run the buffalo off the cliff and then process the animal at the bottom. And there were some fragments of bones still there. And so when I touched that first buffalo bone electricity ran through my body there was an, a primal awakening in me perhaps maybe i knew that animal ten thousand years ago after that i began seeing bones when i was on hikes and so i was so naturally curious look at this bone what kind of bone is it what animal did it come from what 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 is this animal's behavior how did it die and this was before the internet and i just kept buying books and going to the library and putting together the pieces of the puzzle and just naturally spontaneously driven by my curiosity and passion. So I became really intimate with the animal kingdom over, over a long period of time by doing this. And I was raised in a traditional culture where it was all about degrees and cars and money and house and fame. So I was doing this in secrecy because I knew people in my community would think it was creepy or macabre. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea what I was doing other than I was feeling pure love and passion. Then I started coming across the animals that had crossed and they were decomposing and it didn't bother me at all because then it was like, wow, I could be up close and personal with this raccoon and look at those whiskers and the fur and that tail. And I was just, look at the feet and the claws and the smell and the decomposition sounds horrible, but it didn't bother me at all. I was so honored to be up that close and personal with a wild animal. And then that I would turned me into noticing roadkill. So I would start taking the roadkill off the road to honor their life and returning the animal to the soil. Then the animal started talking to me and saying, take me home. And then I started wanting to get at the bone and I learned how to work with the transforming meat and it just got weirder and weirder, but I just kept doing it. And it turned out after 20 years of doing this and getting at the bone and working with all manner of decay and finding the beauty in it and being intimate with the animal and then figuring out how to display it in my barn that you can see behind me. I was making art out of the animal parts. I was a transformer. Working with these animals that were decomposing, I intuitively learned how to transform our human nature to get at the bone which is our soul that was the symbolic journey that i went on that was completely unique to me because i had not been trained and so yes i make art out of the bones <laughs> and 
so did you go get training or did you just continue with yourself cool That's i mean the when the internet was shamanism you're you're in you're in contact with the source and you don't have to be trained Exactly. And that's what I want to teach people is just return to your childlike self who's spontaneous and creative and playful. And you're not doing it to think, what will people think of me? Or will I make money at this? And see where it leads. There's like a lighted path. You just take little steps. I never would have known. It would lead me to my soul path and my calling to help other people do the same thing because now I'm an expert in it, even though I don't have the fancy degree. But I was curious. So even then, at some point, the internet was invented, and I started researching on the internet. It took a long time before any of this stuff was up on the internet. So now you can Google all sorts of stuff, you know, how to preserve a bone or do self-taxidermy. Um, but I did teach myself in the sense that I eventually started learning from the internet, and then I would ask people questions, and I went to taxidermy school. Taxidermy is a different thing because you're, you're actually stuffing an animal, and I'm really more about the meat and bones. But still, if you find a pristine animal and it can be taxidermied, it's, it's another example of getting up close and personal with a wild animal. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so I was, my next question was tell us about your work. So <laughs> it sounds like we already sagged into that. We did. So... It was one thing for me to be doing this in secrecy and privacy. And then it was another to come out of the closet and say, this is who I am. And I'm going to turn it around into something where it can help other people. So now it's my inherent gift. And that's the other beauty I learned in my, my, you know, 40 year journey, trying to figure out who I am on the inside, uh, is that, um, and I lost my train of thought there, but, um, it, we, how do you express who you are fully in, in modern society without having to go off and be on the fringe and do it in secrecy and privacy or be rejected? That's a really hard lesson to do. So the next step for me was to come out of the closet and be who I was and own it. And then, oh, and this is what I was going to say. When you have a wound, my original wound was not being seen for who I was on the inside and not valued for my invisible essence, my natural original nature. That was super painful for me. And there was a period of time when I blamed my parents and society and rejected things. But I came full circle to see that, oh, that experience led me to this to who I am, and I turned the wound into a gift because now that I'm the expert at transformation, I help other people do that because I know from firsthand experience. So when I work with my clients, I take them out into nature for a sensory, multi-sensory experience. I have them use all of their senses, eyes, nose, ears, touch, taste, smell. And when we can open those conduits, spirit and our higher self and our inner being, our soul and nature and animals begin to inspire us and send us little messages. And I just like people to connect with who they are authentically, to hold a safer, sacred, safe container for that process mm -hmm. and then not judge them and guide them, help guide them to their authentic self. I can see who they are on the inside. I see in the dark. I can see where their blocks are. So I might give a couple little um, comments to jiggle it or unlock it, but I'm just holding a sacred container for this process and helping them open up and believe and validate who they are on the inside, their innermost essence down to the bone. Wow. <laughs> That's, um, and where, where do you take them out into nature? I live in Northern California at the base of the Santa Cruz mountains. So we live on a beautiful, um, property where there's a lot of wildlife and animals and open space so and in my barn right here so I bring people into my barn a lot of magic happens in the barn here with the animals and then we go out into nature I also have clients that don't live locally and I can work um, on the phone or on Skype and that's just as effective because then I can give them exercises to do on their own in nature and just the process of talking and being held and validated and seen for who they are inside is really powerful. Okay, so so you have a you can do that by just how talking. do you 
so I guess how do you, how do people connect with you? Do you have a website? Yes, I have a website. It's Authentic Wildness, Authentic W I L D N E S S dot com. And on the website, I have a weekly blog that I put out every Tuesday that you can subscribe to. Um, and uh, I wrote a book that is my memoir that tells my life story. And, and so the book in the process of you reading it, it shows you, you get it how I felt all these struggles and um, issues that I came up against in life. For example, suicidal depression, marital problems, um, a, um, a mysterious skin disease on my cheek that was burning red from nose to ear, eye to chin for several years. All these struggles that I came up against, how did I heal them naturally? I tell the whole story in my book. So by reading the book, I demonstrate another way of being. I demonstrate how to transform. I take the reader on my journey. They feel me and how I healed and all the modalities and the animals and the bones and uh -huh. psychology, all the above. But also, there's a lot of shamanic energy in the book. So just by reading it, even if you're not even thinking about it, you're just enjoying the story, it's working away on that person because of the shamanic energy I've put into it. But uh, so you could read my book and that's on the website as well. But working with someone one-on-one, -on -one, my voice and what I see and how I, it's non-judgmental and guiding them, it's just as effective on the phone or via Skype or uh or in person wow okay that's good to know <laughs> i would love to have you come out here to colorado though at some point i would love that too yes that would be wonderful i have a shamanic center in a very creative area with a lot of shamans oh i would um, i would love that because i feel sometimes um like I'm the Lone Ranger out here in Silicon Valley. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to meet like-minded people that I resonate with. That would be amazing. Well, good. We'll talk about that more. So anything else you want to tell people before we sign off? I just want to say that every single person listening right now and everybody on this planet, you have an inner authentic wildness that longs to emerge. So find someone that can help you uh, on that journey. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.